What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, the founder of the new Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio by Josiah Novak. I I did pronounce your first name right, didn't I, brother? Dude, you nailed it, man. (laughs) (laughs) So Josiah is a total badass. Let me give you guys his bio real quick. And obviously I met Josiah uh, through Twitter, which I've met a lot of amazing people in this space. But anyway, he's a fitness coach, author, and also the host of the True Transformation podcast. Uh, and also the creator of the True Transformation Body Transformation System. He's in amazing shape. He's 34 years old. He's good friends with a lot of people that I know also on Twitter in the fitness bro space. Um, he's so just more on his uh, bio. Very simple, long-term focused approach that has helped thousands of men and women to achieve permanent results when it comes to their body, fitness, life, and health goals. His work has been featured in Fitness RX Magazine, Mind Pump Media, Order of Man, and many other popular outlets. He lives in Northern Virginia with his, with his wife, Michelle, and their two little boys, Jackson and Cameron. So, bro, it's awesome to have you here to, um, to talk about a lot of things, and we'll get into the meat of the discussion. But as I always do on, it used to be the TOT Revolution, but now the Jay Campbell Podcast, is I kind of just ask you, like, how did you get here talking to me today? Bro, that's, that's an amazing way to start. Uh, I always say, you know, the, the surface level looks like we just connected on Twitter, uh, but it's been a long journey to be able to get to the point where I even have the opportunity to, you know, bump shoulders, rub shoulders with someone like yourself. The journey really started, man, back when I was a kid. Uh, I got into fitness because I was uh, abused as a child. Uh, oh, man, I'm sorry I was, you, yeah, I grew up in a, in a family that uh, had a long history of alcoholism. And uh, especially on my dad's side, my mom's side, similar background, but she was more on the verbal abuse, emotional abuse side. My dad was the physical one. So long story short, man, I started working out to defend myself. That's straight up the reason why I got in the gym, because I was bullied as a kid inside the home, outside the home. And I said, fuck, man, the only way I'm ever going to be able to feel adequate is to start building something and my body. Stop you, dude. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you sharing that. I know that that was probably very difficult in your life. Um, I come from a very similar family, nine children, the oldest of nine, total abusive, still nuts. My dad never hit us, Mm. but he was like tyrannically like your mom probably. And then my mom was just bullied by him too. But anyway, long story short, did you take your dad, bro? (laughs) <laughs> I never have. <laughs> Could I take him now? Yes. Then no. Man. I had to ask that question man, because like <laughs> probably been stewing like, dude, at some point I'm gonna knock you out. Yeah. So it came really close. I, I got the closest I got was I'm the oldest of six, by the way. So we have a wow, lot in common. That's the we're kindred spirits, man. That's yeah, like- absolutely. And I got really close because my youngest brother is nah, nine years younger than me. And when I was 20. 21, 22, still like, you know, ego that would, you know, blow up a room. Like, I, you know, my, I was just a young, young and dumb. Well, my younger brother called me and said that my dad had, had beat him. Right. Oh, and, uh, he was, you know, in tears and just like, this is what dad did. And he, you know, pushed me down the stairs and all this shit. Shh. And, uh, I lived at the time about four hours away. And I remember getting in my car and you're like, that's a- it. I grabbed the baseball bat, man. I was like, I don't give a shit. You know, like I'm just going to go to town. And uh, you know what's crazy, man? I just got a call as I was driving from a pastor. um, And he was like, hey, what's going on? It was just a random call. It wasn't like, you know, uh, he knew I was. There's no coincidences, as you know, though. Yeah. Definitely not random. (laughs) Yeah. And so, two things there. Obviously, I I didn't go down there. Um, Never confronted my dad on it in a violent manner. I actually called him and just said, look, man, you ever do that again? You know, we're going to have, we're going to have issues. Now my dad is, is no slouch, uh, sure. yeah, <laughs> you know, no, he, sure. Navy guy, 20 plus years, you know, armed to the teeth, you know, he's, he carries and you know, all the time he's right. a guy who, you know, he's fully ready. So it wouldn't have been like me beating up an old fat guy. It would have been like, you know, me probably having to dodge bullets. <laughs> <laughs> right. But 
at the end of the day, man, um, that was the start of my journey, right? So it didn't get off on a, on a healthy foot, if you will. I, I did it to really cover up a lot of hurt, to be honest with you. Sure, um, sure. But I fell in love with it from the second I stepped in, in, in the gym and uh, I watched uh, Pumping Iron as uh, you know, a teenager. Yeah. And I read Arnold's Encyclopedia, which back then, those were the internet resources that we have now. That absolutely, was it, bro, Absolutely. Fucking awesome. And I, I love that because I, I was so deep into it in terms of learning and really, really testing, right? That was like what a lot of people miss now is they, they want the like instant, like, okay, all I got to do is put butter in my coffee. Sweet, dude. I'm going to get shredded, right? And it's like, dude, back then I had to go in and actually apply this because I had no, there was no case studies. There were no, no it was just like, these are what guys did in these black and white photos. Exactly, dude. And Go do it for six months. Let's see what happens, right? Exactly. exactly. And, I, and I love it, man. And those were the, literally the gold, golden age, right, for us. But so anyway, I, I became a uh, personal trainer in college, actually, uh, after getting hurt playing sports. Uh, the one thing I never really mastered early on, though, was my nutrition. And uh, once I got out of school, got into real life, and encountered a lot of adversity, both financially, in my relationships, emotionally, never really dealing with this deep, deep hurt, and also hatred uh, for my parents, never confronting it. Uh, I started to eat like a maniac, man. I, I really didn't have control over my nutrition and uh, ended up getting really fat, <laughs> overweight, wow. and, yeah. and unhappy. I was about 60 pounds overweight at probably my peak. Maybe I, I say 80 sometimes because really I lost 80 pounds, but it wasn't all fat, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and I was unhappy. And so when I went through my, my emotional transformation where I was able to confront the hurt, confront the pain, get therapy, um, go through a lot of change mentally, I started to really dive into the power of nutrition and transform my body, right? I, I lost all the weight, got in amazing shape. And the biggest lesson that I learned from it all was what is, what is going to really lead to sustainable results, right? What is going to allow me from a mental standpoint to love myself, take care of myself and utilize fitness in a positive way versus this shield and this like this aura, this bubble I was trying to build around myself to avoid confronting the internal issues that I was dealing with, man. Um, so, you know, it's been a long, long time. I became a, a trainer 15 years ago. I've uh, been training and coaching people ever since. So been a decade and a half, which is, makes me sound old, but I'm not that old. Um, but yeah, 19 was when I got my, my PT cert, man. And it's been a crazy journey ever since. So Josiah, you know, just listening to you, man, I got to tell you, first off, you have, you have a very ancient soul. You know, I'm really big into energy reading and energy work and you, you've been around a long time. And I, my guess is that you and I have had, I mean, I'm feeling such a connection to you. It's incredible. <laughs> like I'm sure we've had many journeys together. Truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Like I, I usually don't sit back and just listen to people, but like, I'm really, you know, I'm vibing your story and listening to you. And, uh, you know, I feel you so much and so deeply from heart to heart, like what you've gone through with your dad. You know, I want to ask you questions about your family. I'll just ask yes. you just one more. Um, are you, are your parents? And well, first, before I ask it, so my parents are still completely stuck in survival programming. So my dad is exactly the same way, right? He wasn't abusive physically, but verbally still is crazy. 74 years old. Now he's a multimillionaire. He also has a $400,000 collection of guns. You know, he's in the Southeast in Atlanta, but they're both literally like, they have no purpose. Or how should I say? Um, beyond their kids, they've never understood the purpose of why we're here, right? They really don't. They don't have love. They've abused each other, you know, verbally and, you know, emotionally and, Anyway, without you know, uh, begrudging them, I've done a lot of inner work on myself and I've completely forgiven them. Mm. And, and not only have I forgiven them, but I appreciate who they are, right? Because like they were the reason that I came into the planet just as my brothers and sisters. So whatever I have against them and feeling for them, anger, you know, whatever, all the same feelings that you've had, clearly. Mm. Sure. Um, I've, I've released that and I've forgiven them, but you know, they haven't done any work. And that's not me to judge them, but it's like, you know, it's interesting for me because like, I'd like to ask, have your parents done any work or are they still the same? So it's a great question, man. I love that. Uh, my father, no, I, I have no communication with my father. I have some crazy stories about it that I'm happy to share, but uh, my mom, I have to give her credit. She has done an amazing job turning her life around. That's uh, awesome, man. She split from my dad. Uh, Dude, that is amazing. My mom couldn't do it. Yeah, she had to. And I, 
I'm so glad that she did, man. I actually, so people ask me like, what were some of the most, you know, biggest turning points in your life? And honestly, one of the biggest ones was my parents getting a divorce. That's so awesome. One of the best things that ever happened to me. Yeah, for your mom, especially. Oh yeah, for my mom. And she's remarried to an amazing man that uh, is more than a father figure, not just for myself, but for my, for my boys, right? So bro, think about this for a second. Your mom left an abusive relationship where she had zero love other than the love that she gave you guys. And even then she didn't know how to really love you, right? hundred percent. Yeah. And now she's in a loving relationship with a man who probably worships the ground that, you know, she walks on and treats her with respect. And then it's obviously a mutual thing. See, dude, my mom never got that. Mm. And my mom and dad are still... 74, 73 years old. And it's incredible. I mean, I was on the phone yesterday with my sister. My dad's got to have major hip replacement surgery on Monday of next week. And it's like, I don't know. I don't want to go too deep because obviously this will be public and stuff. But sure. um, I appreciate you talking about this because it really, it touches me and my heart that there are people. So I'm so thankful that your mom was able to leave and, and yeah. find what she found. And obviously it's helped you too, right? Oh, 100%. Um, she's been through recovery, uh, for sure. In fact, just recently she, she came so out and she mean. said, um, you know, she, she basically spilled her guts and said, look, these are some of the things I've been dealing with my whole life, right? Uh, from a recovery standpoint, from childhood abuse that she suffered. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, like it, it, it's, it, there's a turning point. You hear this phrase sometimes like uh, around the internet, like when people talk about their parents and they say uh, something like, oh yeah, your parents are people too, right? and they're human beings. And you go, what does that even fucking mean? Right? Like, like, okay. Like, no, they're my parents. Like, you know, it's different, right. but it's not until you see them in their most vulnerable state. Right. And you go, wow, this person has been through some serious shit too. Yeah, man. Right. They're not perfect. Right. And they have their own demons that they're battling. They have yeah. their own emotional uh, scars and things that they're trying to still heal from in a lot of ways. So, I have forgiven both my parents. That's um, awesome. We've made, my wife and I have made multiple efforts to reconnect with my father. He won't do Unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, he's not open to it. Yeah. Um, yes. yeah. And that's, and, and I told my brother this just the other day. We had this conversation literally a couple of weeks ago. And I said, because he's gone and going through what I'm going, what I went through in my mid 20s, right? Sure, Where I was sure, just sure. so fucking pissed. Angry. Yeah. Angry, man. Like, and also, like, what did I do? You know, like, what, what's wrong with me? Look at me. Like, I'm this guy who likes to work out, you know, like, right, bro. you should be proud of me in this, right. you know, whatever. So and I told him, look, I said, there is just this, there's this thing where you have to understand that it's not your fault, right? Number one, you also have to understand that everyone has their flaws. And in this case, our father has a flaw that he has not confronted yet. He's right. not willing to go to fight and battle it and to come out on top. He's just not willing to do that because it's scary, because he's not ready, whatever. And you have to be willing to, to accept that yes. and not sit in this like yes. state of mind where you can't move forward, right? Exactly. So, uh, you know, my, someone asked me, my wife asked me this the other day, she said, you know, if you reach out again, like, would you, if you ever reached out, would you be cool? I said, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I grabbed lunch with him right now. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I'd be totally down. And I would not sit there and be like, you this, you that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would, you know what I would do? I'd be like, what can I, what can I do to help you, man? You know what I mean? Cause I don't need anything. I'm fucking good, dude. Like I I'm great. I have my boys, my family, my business, my friends. I want to show him love, right? If he's open to it. No, but dude. this is a deep discussion, but you know, it's, it's, it's a no, part no, of I me keep going. This is so profound. Yeah. And, 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 and I know we're vibing right now, energy wise, but the energy is changing on this planet right now. Right. So high vibration people like you and me can connect in this way. And we've never obviously met other than just conversations on um, Twitter. Yeah. We, we share very similar stories. But in defense of your dad, how old is your dad? He's in his late 50s. Or he's 60, 60. 60, yeah. But yeah, so he's similar. He's a baby boomer. He's right on the cusp of being a boomer. That sure. entire generation came from the Depression. Yep. They were born to parents who literally stood in food lines who had nothing, Josiah, nothing. Yeah. So young people today, you know, not you and me, but younger than us, they have absolutely no understanding of that type of world because, as you know, these kids today, they have everything. Oh, yeah. Boom. It's, you know, there's an app for it. I mean, that's yeah. instant gratification world. So, like, people from them, you know, again, and I'm not defending your dad, nor am I defending my dad. They are, as I call them, stuck in survival programming, and it's a choice. You said it, right? They choose mm -hmm. to be that way. And you and I cannot judge or blame them. They have their own path that they're walking. But 
it's incredible, you know, when you really think about why they act the way they do. And I know that my dad was literally inculcated to be in lack, limitation, and scarcity. That's his MO. And yep. so it's always that way. And even he became a millionaire through hard work and doing all these things, he still literally acts like he's six or seven, you know, years old and broke. Dude, we're, we're so similar. It's crazy. Dude, dude, dude listen to this. So <laughs> this is my, my dad. dad. You're again, describing my dad right now. Bro, my dad is a multimillionaire. Yeah. And he has to have his hip replaced and he's using Kaiser. He could literally, because of my relationships, I, and I've already had this, like, people that have heard me talk about this are like, they call me and volunteer, you know, one of the world's top orthopedic surgeons is like, dude, I'll literally fly into Atlanta and work on him. And literally I'll charge him my rate. And no, it, 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 it's, it's insane. Like the way they are, the way they are. Right. But that's, yeah. that's their choice, dude. Like we can't, no matter how you and I communicate with them or offer our help or our service or whatever, it doesn't matter because they are walking the path that they, like you said, or, you know, very profoundly earlier, they choose to be on the path that they're on and there's nothing you and I can do about it. 100%. It's crazy that you mentioned the scarcity because I feel like that is one of the big things that not only did he struggle with this, something that he passed on to me uh, that I had to really overcome. Of course, both uh, of us. Because, yeah, he, he grew up in, in a small town of Pennsylvania with maybe, you know, 500 people. And he lived in an 800 square foot, you know, little home with no money. His dad was a former pinball machine mechanic, man, making, yep. you know, a couple bucks an hour. Yeah. His mom was a drug addict. You know, it, it's not, it's not like this guy came from just this amazing background. He's a total asshole. This guy went through some shit, of you know? Course. And so as, as a man now with kids uh, and an understanding probably what he, he experienced in a way of, of just terrible, uh, you know, environment and terrible scarcity from his father and abuse yeah. and alcoholism on that side. You know, I, I honestly just pray for the guy, right? Because I, I'm good now in turn. I would love to have a relationship with him. That'd be awesome. Uh, but I also would love for my kids to have a relationship with him uh, because he actually has a lot to teach. He, of course, absolutely. You know, he taught me hard work. He dude, taught, he's from the school of hard knocks. Yeah, dude. He's a fucking boss, like in yeah, terms of work exactly. ethic. I mean, the guy, exactly. he's still work. He's retired Navy. Uh, still, he's, he's done his whole home. He, he's fixed everything. He's, right, he's of course. done it all himself. He still works 50 hours a week because he just, he's like, he that, and I'm dude, like that's, that's what he's attached to. He doesn't know any better. Right. But I'm that's, like, I mean, I, that's his driving force is his work he's, because he's, he's not in guy. love. You know, it's like I, I did, you know, a podcast yesterday. I talked about this and, you know, my wife taught me this and it's so true. And you probably already know this, but just in case you don't, there's only two purposes for human beings on this planet Two, nothing else. And it's, it's so true. And I've, I've meditated and contemplated so deep on these statements, but to give and to receive love, that's it, dude. Mm. There's nothing else. Everything else is material bullshit. Yeah. You're not taking it with you after your physical body dies you know, you know, regardless of your spiritual beliefs. And, you know, I think that we live forever. We're energy, but, but the reality is, is like when you're not giving and receiving love, which your dad is not, and your dad's heart is, you know, corroded over for whatever reason, just like my dad is corroded over for whatever reasons, their focus is on their house, like your dad, or, you know, my dad's things or his guns or his whatever, you know, yeah. Fox news screaming at the television. I mean, that, you know, that's what, that's what their lives become. And it's, as you know, dude, it's external. It's not internal. Mm. And that's when, you know, you have this like, oh man, but you're right, dude. And, and by the way, I want you to know this. I know this for a fact, cause I did it. I never thought I would have a relationship with my dad. I didn't even talk to my dad in my thirties, bro. My, my dad was the same way. He talks shit about me. But to this day, my dad still thinks I'm like a steroid user, you know, <laughs> steroid guy or something. It's insane. Right. So and he needs therapeutic testosterone so bad, but like, <laughs> but like literally it's, it's, it's credible. Right. I but it's that. like, he's on his own path, but I willed him back into my life. I manifested him back in my life and my, my wife helped a lot, you know, credit to her because she, they really love her and respect her. But, um, you can have a relationship with your dad. Sure. It's just a matter of you energetically sending him healing and then allowing him to just wake up one day. And he probably will. He's not that old dude. No, no, he's got he's got another twenty plus years yep. on the planet for sure. Yeah, so you you'll get him back into your life. You just, yeah, you know, it's a, just a process now. Oh, it will. I already know it's coming, and I'm you know the writing's already on the wall. It's just I, I have to you know like you said, man, you, the energy has to be in line with opening your your heart to that because that time will come 
and uh, I want to be ready for it in a positive way, right? Um, but yeah, that's awesome. that's, <laughs> that's that's kind of. I mean, fitness is a powerful yeah. part of my life um, for more than just aesthetics, for more than uh, just, you know, looking cool and all that kind of stuff. It's, it is a big anchor in my life and has been for quite some time. Well, let's talk about that now because this has been so amazing, bro. I, bro we oh, yeah. Together. I can talk about this forever. No, but I mean, like, you and I got to get together because, like, for sure. energy, I mean, like, I mean, we'll talk about it off air. But, yeah, so let's just talk about that. Um, so, obviously, fitness is an anchor. It is a unifying, a very signifying you know, it's a power because as you know, right, you know, and I always say this, but at base essence, beyond these meat modems, all we are is, is, is energy. We are yeah. whirring electrons, plasmatic fire, whatever you want to call it. And it's like, you have to truly feel that and, and, and to harness that energy. You, you should, and again, I, I'm not telling everybody to do this, but I mean, I think you should, but you should be fit mm. because the more fit you are, the more aligned you are fundamentally you know, it's like, think of the body as an antenna, right? You know, we know about the chakra system, but it's like the more aligned you are, the more fit you are, the lower your body fat, the less inflamed, um, the more you're capable of receiving the things that you and I have been talking about. Because this is a deep conversation. A lot of people don't ever go this deep because they don't know how to. And as you know, alcohol, GMO, sugar, all these other horrific EDCs, all these things that are coming from them, you know, wh whoever they are, to attack our endocrine systems and our biological systems that is what suppresses our ability to receive and to become and and, and to be you know as i said to be a being um yeah. and, and and fitness really strengthens the being you know and so many people argue about that and they'll say oh that's not true you know because i know so many people that look great on the outside but they're just hollow shells on the inside no i'm not talking about <laughs> i'm talking about that the more sound fundamentally physically you are the more able and receptive you are to receiving again the inner stuff you know again however your spiritual beliefs are god energy whatever but and i've always known that and again as i've gotten you know i'm almost 50 and i'm in the best shape of my life and it's like i've been able to re recognize that everything is frequency right it's all energy and frequency and so when you are aligned it's just you, you just vibe better especially with other you know higher vibrational people Absolutely. Yeah, dude, you don't look 50, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I work at it, obviously. Yeah, obviously, right? So, yeah, I, I, I talk to a lot of people. And, I, and the reason, okay, the reason why I can connect with people on a level uh, where they are is because I've been there, right? I've been homeless. I've sure. been broke as shit. I've been yep. an asshole. I've been a drunk driver on the road being a total idiot. <laughs> I've been, you name it, I've done it. I've stole, I've, I've stolen shit from Desire, people. You I've haven't killed people. anybody in this incarnation yet though, right? No, 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 no murder. <laughs> no murder. I might've killed some people. You're like, you're like, yeah, in past lives, bro, I've taken a lot of people out. But in this one, in this one, nah. In nah, this one, I'm straight, right. In this one, I'm, I'm okay. Um, <laughs> so I've been in your shoes, right? And there was always these moments where I said, what can I grasp onto? I feel like I'm fucking drowning out here, right? And this world will eat you up and chew you up, spit you out and all this other stuff. And what are the things you can grasp onto to start getting traction, start building momentum in the right direction? Yeah. And the answer for me was always health and fitness. Yeah. Always. It was never, I'm going to go make a million dollars. I'm going to be happy. Or it was never... I'm going to go out drinking and meet a girl and have sex. And this is going to make me happy. It was never like any of those things. It was simply, let me start feeding myself healthy. Mm -hmm. Let me start moving my body. Mm -hmm. Let me get outside. Let me go for a run. Let me go for a swim. Let me go hike a mountain. Let me go do something that's going to make me sweat. And all of a sudden, a couple things would happen. Number one, my self-belief would start to skyrocket. Yeah. And I would go, oh my gosh. I can get outside and go for a walk today for 30 minutes. I can go do anything. Boom. Crazy, right? Like it's weird, but you, people go, oh, it's, that doesn't make sense. There's no, trust me. It, it really works. does. It works. The second thing too is you get clarity, right? And, and I don't mean like clarity around like you see good. I'm talking about clarity around what you need to do, right? What are the, what is the next step in your life? Whatever that is, right? And look, you'll notice in my messaging, anybody who's listening, you, I don't really talk a lot about how you look. Sure, I want people to feel good about themselves and I want them to look good naked and whatever that means, right? But I talk a lot about what fitness does for you as a person, as a human being on this planet, who, by the way, was given something that is so radical. 
which is human life, right? It's so insane how lucky you are to be here. It's, it's, if you do the math, it's unbelievable, right? And if you want to talk about spirituality, you want to talk about religion, I have my beliefs, right? But I don't think there's any belief out there that would say it's okay to treat this, this vessel that we're in like shit, right? Yeah. People treat their Lamborghinis, their, their Honda Civics, they treat their, their homes, their office space yeah. like it's gold. But then they treat their own bodies like it's a dumpster fire, right? <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I look, I don't speak from a place of judgment at all. Of course. I would have totally been there. And I yeah. still have moments of like, wait a second, what am I doing? Right? Like, let yeah. me let me chill out for a second, right? Yeah. But ultimately, if you want to eat, people are looking for easy, they want the quick, they want the fast. If you want the fastest way to improve your life, to improve how you feel every day, to improve how you show up in your marriage, how you show up with your kids health and fitness. Yeah. I, I, I would argue true. till I'm blue in the face. There's Bro, no honestly, man, better way. So profoundly connected right now. I, I mean, it's unbelievable, but again, you know, like I said, the energy of the universe, people of high vibration are all seemingly finding each other right now. Like your story is so similar to my story, but yes, 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 yes. Being physically aligned. Again, like you said, regardless of your spiritual leanings or beliefs or anything like that, I don't even use the word religion anymore, right? Because like, I feel yeah. like man, I feel like man-made religion is like such a scam at this point. Like, you know, have spiritual, have beliefs, you know, believe in God, believe in whatever you believe in, but it's just like, God, everything is just such a sham at this point. You know, and I was raised Catholic, like hardcore mm -hmm. Catholic, right? And, and you look at Catholicism and again, I don't judge people's religious beliefs or anything, but it's just, it's incredible, dude, what's going on. So obviously find, oh, it's unbelievable. find yourself, you know, again, like if you, if you're, if you're a student of the teachings and all the teachings are the same, right? It's just like mm. mishmash, but it's like, you know, if you believe in Jesus and again, Jesus might not even have been real. Again, I don't, I don't deny that there's a figure, an avatar being like Yeshua, Jesus, whatever, but it's like, he said the kingdom of God was within you. Mm. And it's like, when you learn that every answer is found within again, right? So it's like, you know, I, I, I speak about it like this. I say there's two um, templates of consciousness. There's victim savior, which is what 85% of humanity is in, where it's like, not my fault. Mom mm. and dad didn't love me enough, right? Never accountability. And then there's like people like me and you. And obviously we were victim savior at one time too, but we sure all oh, fuck you, dude. Yeah, yeah. So we've chosen now to be what I call empowered and sovereign. And it, when you're an empowered and sovereign, then that means that it's on me, motherfucker. Hmm. I take ownership for my shit. Yep. Even if something happens to me today, you know, I drive home and I get hit by a bus or somebody rear ends me, it's still on me to get better. Yeah. And so it's like when you can realize that everything that happens to you is either a choice that you made or is just part of the experience of living in this, you know, like you said, this meat suit, this physical existence, um, that's when everything changes because everything then becomes personal accountability and you become responsible for not only your actions, but the words you speak, the thoughts you think, and of course, obviously your actions that you take. And so it's like, it's so important to recognize that you are empowered and sovereign regardless of what's happened to you. Dude, look, you were abused. I was verbally abused. I was tortured. Um, I've been through, you know, as I say, many dark nights of the soul. You know, my story for people who know me, who followed me pretty much know, but I attempted suicide at 40. My life was taken mm -hmm. from me nearly. My kids were kidnapped from me. I mean, we've all been through dark nights of the soul. It's, it's choosing what you do after mm. and are you going to take ownership right correct yeah i you know there's it's crazy man it wasn't until i sat i almost committed suicide too dude we're very similar it's really really weird um Bro, it's, cool. I already know it's that, not man. weird i mean it's just it's part not of, weird at all we're yeah. attracting we're attracting the same type of people because of the yeah. energy of the planet right now absolutely and I remember sitting thinking, you know, I, I really don't, I have two options, right? Okay. So one is I can take my own life. Uh, two is I can take full 100%. Nobody's coming to save me. Right. There is no, there is no, you know, lifeline. Right. There is nothing right. besides me doing exactly what I need to do right. to get my shit together. Exactly. As soon as I chose that other way, the, the way of taking full ownership, everything changed, dude. Everything. Like there was no more, Oh God, whining and complaining and life's right. not fair and all this shit. Right. It was just, I, everything that happens to me, good or bad, great or terrible is my fault. Yeah. yeah. Straight up. 
And it's empowering, dude. People go, what do you mean? It's not always your fault. Fuck yeah, it is. It's always your fault. So it so, is. something you tapped into, I want to go back to what you just said. Um, so you tapped into your higher self. And, and, and realistically, our soul, our spirit, whatever, again, your beliefs, um, that's God. Yeah. God is in all of us at all times. It's tapping into that intuitive power of, again, your spirit, your soul, your higher self. I mean, I call it my higher self. You know, and you said, you know, earlier, like through prayer, like, you know, I could show you my calendar, like, dude, I pray six times a day, mm. right? Like, I don't pray like in the religious, get down on my knees and say, amen and all that stuff. But I mean, I have invocations, you know, I have like, you know, um, I mean, I, I, I could tell you, but I mean, I say prayers to my guides, my, or my guardian angels, you know, whatever you want to call them, benevolent beings. But it's like, I know, like I have done so much contemplation, so much inner work, so much meditation that I know that they're around me at all times. And it just takes you knowing it so to have their power, you know, imposed or imbued through you. And so it's like, that's what you just said. Like you tapped into your higher self at that moment when you had a choice, you could, you know, opt out or stay and become empowered. And dude, I did the same fucking thing when I was 40, mm. right? Like I literally was at rock bottom. My brother had just called me and said, you're the biggest waste of a human being ever. I just lost my job. I'd already been charged with all these things that had happened to me. It was facing all these charges. And it was like the last vestige of being in the matrix was like having this still really good job that my company hadn't let go of me, even though I was faced with all these charges, which were by the way, fabricated. You know, they're all domestic mm. violence stuff that my ex and her boyfriend made up against me. And my kids were kidnapped from me. And bro, I literally just, I was at the gym, pulled out of the gym parking lot and drove through a light at like 80 miles an hour with my fucking eyes closed in Las Vegas on Silverado Boulevard and, and Rhodes Ranch. Very busy, congested. And something tapped me on the shoulder and made me wake my eyes up. And thank God I did. And, you know, I, I mean, I would have, who knows how many, I killed myself too, but just wiped out people, you know, that were the freaking streetlights. Sure. And I jerked my car over and... Since then, you know, that was when I was 40 years old. I'm 49 now, or almost 49. I'll be 49 in like three weeks. And I've just been on like this, you know, ride since then. And it's like, because I tapped into my higher self and my higher self was probably was like, nope, it's not your time. But, you know, I still had to take ownership because I was still at rock bottom in my life and everything. I mean, I pretty much have lost everything. You know, I gone sure. from being a multimillionaire in my early thirties to like being oh, essentially almost penniless at that point. Mm. And so again, you know, it's the roller coaster of life and it's like you choose who you're going to be by again, you know, taking everything you did, taking ownership, becoming yeah. empowered, becoming sovereign. This is my shit. I got this. And so yeah. many people, bro, can't do it. Ah, oh, man. I, anyone listening though, I would encourage you to like, you know, man, if, if there's one piece of advice I can give anybody, that would be it. That would be totally it. Just take, say, you know what? whatever it's all on me straight up no exactly. no bullshit you know what i mean like oh my dad hit me cool how i respond is my fault exactly. it's my fault right exactly you know and uh yeah it's it's crazy because from that moment same thing it's my life it's been nine years too wow it's so fucking weird dude <laughs> i was 25 when when i sat there and dude decided. god put us on this call today dude yeah That's it's crazy. been nine years 25 years old i sat there and i had nothing my job was shit I had no job. I lost a business um, and uh, lost a relationship. And I said, man, you know, this is it, dude. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a fat ass, <laughs> you know, but it's like, Hey, but I'm so happy. You know, most people don't talk about that. So I'm so happy that I've been through what I've been through. That's awesome. So Me happy. Too. Me you too. know what I mean? Cause, Me too. cause I, I've been given literally just had this conversation the other night with my wife. And I said, sometimes I think, and I go, I'm so lucky, dude. Like I'm so lucky. Yeah. I, I look at people who have disabilities, who have absolutely uh, debilitating issues that, you know, they were just born with. And I go, man, I was, I went through a, a rough patch as a kid. My parents were not perfect. Uh, there's plenty of parents out there who do some crazy shit, way worse than my parents. Of course, right. Of course. Kill, kill kids. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But here I am and I am so fucking lucky. Yeah. Like I am lucky, dude. And I'm very, very thankful for all the bullshit I've been through. Yeah. And if I go through more bullshit, I'm going to be thankful for that too. But Josiah, so, the know, thing, so you and me are the same and people like us are the same. You have gratitude. Yeah. Once you recognize that having gratitude, like you said, you know, just waking up in the morning and realizing that this is such a gift. True. And no matter how far down you go, you're still alive, right? And so something you just said too, which is really, really profound and very important is 
when you have gratitude, you recognize that like, it's, I'm, I'm trying to put it in words, but like, it's the energy again. It's like recognition that you can, okay. So what you said is that no matter what happens, it doesn't matter. Right. And so it's like, I also chose with help from my wife, I always go back to my wife. It's really been my, one of my, if not my most profound, greatest spiritual mentor. She would always say like, you can label past experiences as collapses, failures, you know, fiascos, or you can choose to label them mentally as learning experiences. And mm. you have labeled obviously everything as a learning experience. And that's why you are where you are here today. And just as me now too, I've everything the same. I don't even look back on anything that was quote unquote bad that I labeled at one time as it was literally a choice to learn from it. Right. So it's like that yeah. whole neutral observer in your own life. You can take a step back and you're like, Hmm, interesting. I probably don't want to have that happen to me again, but what can I learn from this? Sure. And that's what you've done. Yeah. Since you were 25, just like me at 40. Dude, that is insane. Nine years. Both of us, nine year, nine year horizon. Nine year journey. Yeah. And, it, and, and, and for both of us, I, I already know, because I, I feel your soul, you, like, it's just going to continue to go like this, as long as the planet doesn't blow up. And even if the planet blows up, we'll probably <laughs> it's all good. be going here. I'll be on to a better place. Exactly. You know, it's all good. That's absolutely yeah. the, the attitude you got to have, too. When you yeah. go real deep and existential, you got to be like, well, you know what? As long as I'm still doing the work, I'm being loving, you know, and good to other people. I treat people with kindness, care, and concern. Mm. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You're right. It doesn't matter. And you know, people always ask me that. Like I, you know, I did a big ask me anything yesterday and they, they're like, how do you become high vibration, Jay? People are asking like that. I said, listen, I don't have all the answers, but I know that if you treat people with care, kindness, and concern, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're high vibration. Dude, that is, it's crazy how simple that is, but it's so powerful, right? Because it's, a, it, I get that question a lot too. How do you, you know, how do you improve your life? That's a big question I get all the time. How do you get to the next level? How do you do this? And I say, look, it starts with the most bare bones question. And it is, am I treating others the way exactly. I would want to be treated? Exactly, dude. dude, it's fucking crazy. We live in a time where people don't ask themselves that powerful people don't ask themselves that. And we're led to believe that this world is like, you know, fight this, fight that. We should be butting heads. We should be carving out our territory. And I say, look, if you want to make money, if you want to be hot, you want to be in shape, you want to have a great relationship, live by that code. Exactly. And I guarantee things will start. You'll, it's, you know, you look around, you go, whoa, this stuff's starting to happen to me because I'm starting to think about these things in such a higher level. And this isn't coincidence right? Like I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm being a person of service. I'm loving on other people. I'm showing up. And all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, what? It? And it's crazy, man. The past nine years, things dominoes. It's like a domino, dude. Exactly. It's like, I clicked it the right way and it was just, and it's just going right. And, um, it sounds even like the guy nine years ago would have heard me talking like, like this right now would have been She's like, dude, like you're so, you know, you're on something, man. <laughs> <laughs> you shot up some of Jay's TRT. And bro, let's be honest, dude. There's literally, <laughs> There's literally, again, you know, not my audience or your audience most likely, but 85% of the world, again, you know, I just go by Dr. Hawkins teaching, Dr. David Hawkins, that's what this is, the map of consciousness. But 85% of the world is still, you know, what he calls below the line of integrity. So they are going to listen to this. And again, not our listeners, but, you know, random people yeah. th that aren't our followers will listen to this and be like, these guys are fucking woo-woo guys, you know? Mm. And, and they, that's fine. They, they have a right to be that way, but you and I know better. I mean, we've yeah. been down this path and everything you say completely resonates with me just as I know what I'm saying resonates with you. Cause we know we've been there. Yep. Yeah. All right, dude, there's Crazy, two man. points that I want. Cause these are really good. I mean, dude, this podcast has been so much different and better than <laughs> I thought it was going to go, but there's two points that you have that I should, we should address. And that is, sure. I love how do you get your family involved in fitness? That might be mm. one of the greatest points that anyone could ever bring up. And dude, I've done a lot of podcasts and that is yeah. epic. And then the other one is to setting up your year for success. So they kind of go in between. Sure. But maybe, maybe, maybe talk about um, the, how, how you set up your year for success and then go yeah. into getting your family involved in business. Absolutely, man. So I'm a big believer in uh, proactively planning things because yes, crazy shit happens. Uh, random things happen mm -hmm. uh, in the world, right? I mean, the world, like you said, could blow up tomorrow and we'd yeah. be like, oh, wow, we didn't see that one coming, right? But kind of do, I kind of see it coming, but <laughs> like, all right, cool. It wasn't, it's not like the biggest surprise ever, but it's surprising. So things, 
happen. And the more we can spend, and this is not an enormous amount of time, by the way, I'm talking a few minutes of your time to plan things out and just look at a calendar and say, this exactly, is some of the, these are some of the targets, you know, um, I, I laugh because I, I ask people all the time, you know, if you, if you go somewhere you've never been before, do you just get in the car and start driving? Right. Or do you go, no, oh, I should probably put this in my GPS. I should exactly. probably look up a map or whatever. Exactly. Of course you do. Right. Exactly. So you got to build your map, right? You got to build your map. And what does that look like? So it's a simple way of doing it. I, I have checkpoints throughout the year. All right. Pick, pick things that you care about on the calendar. For me, they're my anniversary, my birthday, my wife's birthday, my kids' birthdays. And what I do to keep myself accountable is I aim for improvements between those dates. Okay. And I say it could be fat loss. It could be performance based. It could just be spending more time with my kids. It could be anything. Right. And I set metrics that I want to hit from the certain date till the next checkpoint. Yeah. What does this do? Well, it helps us avoid this whole like, oh, it's such a big goal. You know, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get there. Right. right. Like the elephant. Oh, how am I going to eat that elephant? Well, one bite at a time. Yeah. Right. One checkpoint at a time. And all of a sudden it starts to get really fun sure. because it starts to become this game with yourself of like, wow, okay. So one of my, so I'll use myself as an example. My next checkpoint is Valentine's day. I, I met my wife. We went on our first date uh, as a couple on Valentine's day, super cheesy. I know, but you know what? It, it works. And so Valentine's day is one of my checkpoints every year. So from December 25th, which is one of my checkpoints to Valentine's day, I have a goal. Okay. It could be anything, but it's awesome. oftentimes physical, spiritual, and financial, yep. uh, and also family related something in those, in that mix. And that's how I suggest people plan out their year, right? So if you want to have a successful year and beyond, start thinking big picture, obviously big goals, but then break it down into bite-sized chunks yep. and set up checkpoints that you can now say, Oh, I have a, a six or eight checkpoint year where I'm going to improve from one to the next. And I'm gonna look back and say, Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of myself because I did a lot. That's amazing, bro. I love that. Um, I'm very calendar oriented too. Um, and, I, and I also always throw in the caveat that like, yes, life gets in the way. We know that, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, if you do truly live your life by your calendar, which is again, your map, that's your roadmap. Your calendar literally is your roadmap. And my wife and I, and you and I don't, you don't know this because you and I have just started talking, but like my wife and I decided in 2016 in November that we were going to live literally a t literally, you know, you hear this cliche nonsense all the time, but we're doing it. Live a life by design where every eight weeks we are in an exotic location. It doesn't matter. Come mm -hmm. hell or high water, no business, you know, engagement, no kid thing, nothing. We're going to be there. And you know, to this day, it's still going on. Right. It's amazing. Like the, for, the next trip is, well, she's going to Iceland in three weeks with her senior daughter and her estranged son, who's now back in her life, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Um, and yeah, and they'll go for like 10 or 11 days. I don't go, bro, because cold weather and me, <laughs> we don't, we don't mind, me man. do not happen. Right. Yeah. So I just skipped that. But then, you know, we're going to be in, um, we'll be in Cabo San Lucas in March. And then we take the kids down to Laredo, Naredo. So anyway, we're just constantly every eight weeks, we're in exotic location, probably planning now Greece. And I think Egypt, you know, during the rest awesome. of this year, but, but back to what you're saying is like, when you live by accountability, again, your map, I love that. When you have a roadmap, this stuff is all possible because it's seen. Mm. And as you know, manifestation, I'm a huge believer in quantum physics. Manifestation is the key. We create our reality through our thoughts, words, and actions, as you know. And when you have it, that you're seeing it, right? Like, you know, that obviously, you know, you, once you see it, you, or you can perceive it, you can believe it or yeah. achieve it, all those things. But it's like, it's on the map. And that's how you can make it. So when it's not on the map, you get confused or cloudy, as you know, you know, life gets in the way you have bad days and good days. And again, I don't sure. even like the label in bad days because it's just learning experiences, but you're going to have ups and downs. It's that simple. Yeah, but if you have a map, you're going to get back on the high ground pretty quickly because you can see ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. It's, dude, it's super I, powerful. It takes five minutes, <laughs> you know, the small investment of time. And here's the thing, life happens, like you said, right? But you got to have a compass. Exactly. You, know, you get off track, you get into a storm, you get blown off the path and you don't have a plan. Good luck, man. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're fine. And you're like, Oh shit, I don't know where to start again. But yeah, you do because now you got your, your, your plan. You have your map and you know, Oh, okay. Here's where I was. Here was my target. 
let me just get back on course. Super, super crucial, man. So if, if I could offer that as a, as a tip to make your year and your future so much better, it can apply this to anything. It applies to your business, you can apply this to your fitness, your life, your family, whatever. Have checkpoints, have, mark, have, have metrics that allow you to check off, am I doing what I need to be doing? Super, super important. So uh, awesome. Do you, do you use your calendar like to check it or do you have like a specific, do you like have a daily planner where you write? I know a lot of people like to write, you know, I'm, I, yeah. I, I have a writing thing and I carry it with me in my backpack, but I still am a dork cause I live by my calendar. So I'll look at my calendar and I also, yeah. use a, I use a, I use a, what's it called? Wanderlist. Oh yeah. Wanderlist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I use those two things, but I'm dude, I'm totally with you. I love that idea of having checkpoints throughout yeah. the year. Yeah. I use a calendar and I use notes. I keep notes every day. Um, I have my little, you know, priority list, sure. uh, and then my not so priority list. And, you know, it's it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you do it. Right. It, it right. just, you got to find a quick, simple system. The big one is getting, getting some commitments on the calendar, yeah. right? You got to have that commitment because if you just think about it, you go, that would be cool. Or that would sound nice. No, get it on something, get it to where it's in, it's in your visual line where you're like, okay, this is what I'm shooting for. This is look. And I tell people all the time. The, the old phrase of aim for the moon, land in the stars or whatever it is, right? right, right like right. all we're trying to do is we're trying to get in the vicinity of a target because if you got no target at all, you're just throwing you know darts at a blank wall. You have no idea what you're even aiming for. It's a recipe for not being successful. If you have at least a target and you get close to the bullseye, that's amazing, right? Because you're going to refine your process as you go yeah. along. You're going to get better at this stuff, but you got to have a target. Um, you did mention about and I'll quickly touch on it, how to get your family involved in fitness. This is such a big one because I hear it all the time. Um, oh, you know, my kids, this, my wife, this, blah, 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 right? These are all coming from places of fear. These are all coming from places of, totally. uh, you know, ego. And, and, and that's cool because I've been there too in many other ways, right? It's fortunate enough to kind of get my shit together before I had kids and a, and a wife, but I can totally relate. I've seen it many times in, in clients. So the first thing to understand is that, uh, no matter what you do to force anyone in your family to get involved in fitness, they are not going to do shit unless you lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do anything. They're not going to, cause you're calling them overweight or you're saying, I got to go to the gym and you should too. That's never going to work. Mm -hmm. That's abuse to be honest. That's never going to happen. That's emotional abuse. They're never going to respond favorably to that. And if they do, they're going to resent you. <laughs> totally. Totally. Right. So here's the thing. I start everybody who says, ah, I need to get my family more involved. I want to make sure that they're on board, all this stuff with number one, you need to carve out your time that doesn't interfere with the time you've committed to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a book, uh, the, the way of the superior man, I think is what absolutely it's called. dude. David, great David. book. Yeah. He talks about spending time with your spouse, right. And how, if you have a commitment to, to something and it's fitness and it's losing weight, you have to go for a walk every night or whatever it is. If your spouse is trying to pull you away and spend time with you, you need to be clear and say, hey, look, I have to make time for my goals because an, an, uh, otherwise I'm not going to be able to serve you as a husband or exactly. as a father, right? Now, th that doesn't mean you be an asshole. Absolutely not. It could mean you get your ass up earlier and you get it done. But you do not go into a scenario where you're supposed to be spending time with your family and in the back of your mind, you know, oh, I should be doing my own. Exactly. I should be doing my thing. I should be knocking out because you can't be present. Yes, man. the people you love, totally. right? And they will feel that energy. They'll know that you're not all the way there, that something's not right, and they'll resent you for it, okay? And so that's, and you'll resent them because you'll feel like you're being pulled away from your task, your mission of getting in better shape or improving your business, whatever it is. So get clear on when you're gonna have your time, stick to it, don't slack off on that part, and then be present with your family when it's their time. Um, what we also do, kind of practical stuff, is um, we schedule outdoor activities to get out and be active together, okay? Mm -hmm. I take my little boys, we do Spartan races together. They're five and three, nice, <laughs> right? Nice, nice. And it's insane. Like my other, you know, fathers who I know with little kids are like, what a Spartan race? Are you like, what are you trying to put them, are you trying to turn them into like 300 warriors? I'm like, right. nah, man. It's about getting out there, having fun, doing something together and just being active together, right? It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. My wife and I go on hikes. We do things that- Do you, do you guys aren't... train together? Do you wife and you guys train together? No, we don't actually. We don't. Um, and because we both agree that that's our me time, right? That's my time to just be in the zone. That's very cool, dude. Don't train with her. But I, you know, we train in the same gym. Like we're there together. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Together. But, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, 
it doesn't matter what you do in terms of exercise, get, just get active with your family, right? Yeah. Go, it could be just getting outside, chasing your boys. Think of playtime as exercise time. Yeah. I, I literally make it a game of myself. I put on my little, my step tracker and I take my boys outside and I'm like, let me see if I can get like 2000 steps just running around like a maniac, right? Yeah. With them. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and no, there's no harder workout, by the way, and you don't, you wouldn't understand this because you're in Southern California, but there's no harder workout than when it snows here in Virginia and you go sledding with your boys for two hours. Try waking up the next day. Yeah, that is awesome. the biggest exercise you'll ever, you'll ever No, get. we can't, I can do that. We can go up to Big Bear and we, we, oh yeah, there you we, go. We enter too, but yeah, no, I totally feel you on that, but I like all that stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, everything you shared to do, dude, is literally profound. I mean, again, we have such a connection. I mean, I agree. We're both walking the same path and sure. obviously shared many, many of similar occurrences in our life, dark nights of the soul, tough upbringings, um, but it hasn't deterred us or stopped us, obviously. And now we're living a level 10 life and obviously we see only, only getting bigger and better. Um, so just final question for you. Yeah. Is how do you see the next three to five years, you know, in your life from a standpoint of, how is Josiah Novak going to be bigger, better, and you know, more improved than he is now? Dude, I love that question because I have ultimate clarity around that. I have a mission to provide the highest level of service for everyone, not just for people who pay for my shit, okay? Here's the thing. Well, I want people to talk about me and my business. I want people to, and my mission, right, which is to transform a million people's lives through, through health and fitness. It's not about how much money I make. I don't care if you sign up to myself or not, honestly. I would rather you email me and say, because of your message, because of your mission, because of the content you provide, because of how real you are, how transparent you are, how honest you are, I changed my life. And I never gave you my credit card. I'd be like, dude, that gets me fired up, man. Like that gets me up out of bed, right? Yeah. Same is true in, my, in my, my personal life. Serving my wife, serving my boys, being a man of service, providing protecting those things, doing it without any expectation, dude, that is my mission for the next forever. That's my mission forever. Right? So you say three to five years, man, I three to five years is going to go by in a blink, right? Like I, I, I don't know what, where I'll be in three to five years, but whatever I'm doing, I will be serving every day without any expectation of financial gain or signups or following me on Instagram or any of that stuff, dude, I could give a shit. What I do care about is, can I help you? And how do I help you every day? And if I can do that, even for just one person every day for the next three to five years, man, I will be a very fulfilled man. I don't know about happy because happiness comes and goes, but I will be fulfilled. Yeah. yeah. And I will be full of gratitude, full of just immense Ha just immense humility for, for the opportunity, man. Like, so, you know, that's my mission. And I take that very seriously day by day. I had an awakening this past year where I realized uh, I was still being somewhat scarce with my mindset and I was getting upset at things that I shouldn't. And I wasn't showing up with that mentality of just serving every day. I was a lot, but I wasn't doing it every day. And I had this moment of just like, okay, that's it, man. I'm putting a foot, I'm putting my foot in the ground. I'm drawing a line in the sand. And from here on out, my, my company and the people associated with my company will wake up every day with that mission. That is it, man. That is it. And that goes for my personal life too. My family, my boys, um, you know, I, I, and I don't just say this, right? So you guys will laugh. I'll tell you guys a quick two second story. My son's starting basketball this week. five years old, first time playing sports. And they reached out to all the parents. They said, who would want to be an assistant coach? Okay. And I said, of course, fuck yeah, dude, I'm in service. I want to do it. Cause I want to serve my son. I want to serve his teammates. Right. Well, the, the first test came quickly back to me with an email that said, Hey, based off your athletic experience, we'd love for you to be the head coach. <laughs> I said, Whoa, dude, I, this is basketball, not football. Right. Right? Right. But here I am saying, you know what? Let's do it. So I took awesome. it, man. And here I am studying all the basketball drills. And so, but you know what? It's service, man. I'll show up and I won't be the perfect coach. No way but I will be the guy who's there giving my time without any expectation, man. I can't wait. Well, Josiah, man, you served me today, bro. And honestly, like I have massive, and I, and I, and I say this in purely 
purely, you know, how do you say this? Like, I always say, like, when people say no homo, I say pure <laughs> homo. But like, honestly, dude, like, I have so much love. love. I have so much love in my heart for what you just said, for you as a being, mm. for your experiences, for what you've been through. You know, we, we are definitely resonating on the very, very similar, if not the exact same frequency. So sure. many coincidences, which, as you know, there are none. How can people who um, watch this podcast today, who were not familiar with you before now, obviously reach out to you, connect, and also potentially work with you. What's the best way? Absolutely, man. Um, my uh, social media is very easy to find, just at Josiah Fitness on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I have a podcast, uh, which you'll be a guest on, uh, the True Transformation Podcast. Uh, and then my website, the true transformation.com. We have an immense amount of resources for you. Just connect with me there, me or my team. We respond to every single email DM. Uh, we love it. Reach out. There is no stupid question. There is no bothering us. Send us whatever you need. Um, but we're very active on those platforms, helping people every day. So that's the best way to connect with me, man. And I appreciate it. I, I thank you for having me on the show, man. This is awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's been epic for me. So for everybody watching the show, remember, Remember, it's very, very important to raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We'll see you guys next week.